just get some horrible EMI or overload on some iron. Right there. Look at that. Look what I found, dude. What? You put that in your pocket, a dime. A dime? Where'd you find that? Right here? Right there. Okay. Oh, we're at the same frequency. Move away from Jim here a little bit. The other day we had uh, Jim and I were detecting. We were detecting all day long, and we we're just struggling, right? We were struggling all day long with EMI. You know, we just couldn't dial our machines, and I've never had a problem with the dais. I've always been able to get away from EMI, you know, just by changing frequencies. And the other day we had a mass ejection. Uh, a, a coronal mass injection from the sun it's like a sun flare it's like a really large storm on the sun and it really hinders um metal detectors uh, when we have something like that you know we have a chance like a one like one or two percent chance that we could have an event like that every decade right so it was kind of a rare event but jim and i were struggling i was getting some really it's like a boom in all my frequencies, right? Then I'll get this bum And I just couldn't dial my I was we were both of us were struggling pretty bad that day. And I, I get home and I I freaking uh wanna post my videos and my videos I was having some problems with my cameras that day too. And I get home to, to look preview my videos and my videos were all weird, you know, they had a bunch of grains and stuff on them. So that that um solar event really had an effect on my metal detector and my my camera and um you know there's sep there's a couple different kinds of emi interference you know it's called radio there's radio interference and there's conductive interference you know like when you get to some like on some dewy soil or some uh some stubble you know when you when you sweep over stubble you get that conductive interference you know it's, it's a type of emi because uh, it's actually coming in, you're actually, your coil is coming into contact with the ground. And I, I get EMI on some detectors too, um, even with the dais, on wet grass, you know, that's conductive interfer interference. You can get also conductive interference like on hot soils, uh, like uh, really mineralized soils, like on the beach. You know, if you have your, if you have your coil too close to the, the surface of the sand, you know, sand has a lot of minerals, sometimes black sands, salts, you know, and you can get conductive interference that way. You can just lift your coil off the ground a little bit and get away from that dew on the ground or that the sand, the conductive sand, right? And then there's electromagnetic interference, which is inductive, um, which is like power poles, transformers, the sun flares, um, you know, motors, they can all have an effect on your metal detector and and you can drop your gain down but in that situation when i was uh had those problems the other day during the, the uh, mass ejection event um i i would drop my gain down change my frequencies did a change modes i was just struggling all day long and you know uh it actually that event actually made it so we could see the northern lights all the way down to california and very rarely um do we have that event like that to where we can see the northern lights and you know back in the old days you know when we had um you know like white's machines or garrett machines they had really long cords you know and you had to wrap them around the freaking shaft like a million times and they were smaller smaller cords there you know the the, the diameter of those coil wires were a lot smaller so they had less shielding on them so you had to wrap them really tight because um, some metal detectors, you know, that have the, the wires, if you don't get your coil wire wrapped up right on there, you're going to get some conductive interference, right? It's going to wobble on your shaft, right? That, that coil wire, wire, wire is going to wobble on your shaft and you're going to get a little, some, some hits every once in a while. And with the dais, I haven't experienced too much conductive interference, you know, from the ground or from the wires because there's no really wires in here and and back then the uh the coil wire wires had a lot less shielding on them 
Um, nowadays, we have you know a lot better technology, and we have better um, composites to shield those wires with. Um, but with the Deus, I really don't have problems with the wires because there's no wires, right? Just a little bit about a, you know interference and whatnot. And a lot of guys are have probably struggled this weekend too. Um, So I'm gonna go find Jim. I'm, I don't know where in the hell he's at. He's way over there. But I was getting some EMI a few minutes ago. So just acting really weird again. You know, because it's it that event still hangs around. You know, there's some lingering effects of that EMI for days after the event, right? Um, unlike. A, there's like a big transformer up there. I had a couple problems up there with that large transformer up at the park there. And I had to change my frequency a little bit to get away from that EMI. And if you have a, a metal detector that's just a single frequency, you know, you're gonna run into spots where you're gonna have some problems. Um, like around power poles and around other detectors. You know, if you don't have any frequencies to choose from, right there were so many people in this park yesterday haven't really been finding much but i'm still getting a little bit of that emi just went over something right there i'm getting a little bit of conducted conductive interference you can you can hear it just that blah, 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 blah. really low tones right i'll dig this low tone up here But that's what I like about the dais because it has so many tones that um, that interference is just going to give you one single tone, right? Just one of your many tones. Is it a ring right there? No. That that interference is just going to give you a single tone, right? And you have many tones that your detector can give you. And if you like have a three-tone machine, it's if you have a three-tone machine like uh, most machines are three-tone or you know, two or three-tone machines. If you get any EMI, that that EMI is going to give you one of your two tones. One of your two tones, because if you have a three-tone machine, it's actually a, a two-tone machine, right? Your target response, your, your target tones are gonna be two tones, right? And then your iron tones, so it's, you have a three-tone machine, it's actually a two-tone machine. And it's gonna give you one of those one of those two tones in there. And with the dais, since I have so many tones, that EMI is just gonna give me one of those tones. And I can reject that, that, that target tone by ear, you know? If I get some EMI that I can't really get away from by changing frequencies, I just have to deal with it, you know? It's much easier to deal with EMI with, with the dais because it just gives you just a couple different tones, you know, out of your hundred, over hundreds of tones out of there, you know? If I ran the dais in three tone, I would have the same problems with as other detectors have with EMI, right? That's why you don't really see me using the three tone on the dais because the EMI, right? There's so much EMI nowadays, man. I mean, everybody, everybody has wireless stuff, you know, everybody has cameras in front of their house, wireless cameras and, you know, all the communications, you know, I'm, I'm running frequencies that, um, you know, metal detectors run the same frequencies as broadcasting stations, you know, like, like television stations or, or uh, cell phones. Um, there's also a uh, radio location. Um, they, those run at the same frequencies. So, you know, like if somebody's running a GPS near you, you're gonna get some EMI. Or if you get a phone call or a text message, your detectors can kind of go crazy for a second there, you know? But during those mass, um, those coronal events, those, those sun flare events, it just overwhelms all detectors, man. I don't know if you guys have had any problems with it um, this, this last week, but you know, um, I really struggled the other day. And especially making videos because my camera was malfunctioning too um, because this solar flare event. But I think we're gonna take off here we pretty much did the top lot. Jim is probably in the top lot right now.
he might have went to the bathroom but I think I'm pretty much done for today you just about done dude huh? you just about done yep. around the bathrooms man around the bathrooms right If you lost a ring in these leaves, man, you would never find it. All right. There's a lot of people here yesterday, so. Okay. I'm on this curb right here. I'm gonna go for this one. It sounds really scratchy. Right there. Some kind of tag or something. No, it's, it's Puma. It's off a shoe. Little aluminum tag off a shoe. Jim found a ring in the tot lot first. Five minutes we're here it's right on the surface There's so many people here yesterday Oh, something really scratchy here. Junky. Something really junky here. What the hell is that, man? There's a bolt. Bolt for the play equipment here. I was getting a deeper target out here in the middle of the tot lot. I want to definitely want to dig that out later on. You just never know when you're gonna hit hit on that ring, right? Okay, looks like our day is done. Well, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. <laughs>